welcome to RPV City Talk. RPV City Talk is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes to inform the community on recent city matters. RPV City Talk is a weekly show that features the RPV Mayor, City Council, or City Employees. Hi everyone, welcome to RPV City Talk on the road on this gorgeous day. I am right here at Abalone Cove with our Recreation and Parks Director, Corey Linder. Six months on the job now, happy half a year anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, thanks for having me. And uh, what a great day we get out here. Absolutely, especially given the past rains last weekend. So how's it going so far since you came on and took on the city's Rec and Parks Department to oversee it? Uh, it's, been, it's been a great challenge. It's been a great uh, learning process. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. And I have to say that uh, um, the, the parks and recreation task or our, our, our job uh, is similar across, I think, across not only the state but the nation. But uh, it's the people, it's the, the, the atmosphere, and uh, it's the community and, and figuring out and finding the balance with all that. Well, definitely this community is so supportive of the parks that system that we have, and, and we're very, very fortunate. You came up from San Diego. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about your background for, uh, for those who haven't met you yet out and about on the in the parks and on the trails. Okay. Uh, well, yes, I started, uh, I went down to San Diego to go to school at San Diego State University and uh, I received a degree in recreation administration with an outdoor emphasis. And it was there that I decided that this was the field that I want to get into. Um, in doing so, I, get, I had a couple of internships with the County of San Diego and originally started off as a pro project manager. And uh, with that, um, I stayed with the County of San Diego for 24 years and uh, held approximately nine different positions and kind of worked my way up and uh, lateral promoted, lateral promoted and uh, um, ultimately ended up being, becoming the deputy director. And down there I oversaw, I was the deputy director of uh, operations, oversaw about 50,000 acres, about 175 staff. So talk about how that compares here and a little bit about just the park system that you oversee and the recreation programs that we offer right here in our community. Again, it, it's a little similar, whereas uh, uh, County of San Diego was all service. We provided all the services uh, from acquisition all the way to the program on said park. But uh, here, it's, it's a contract city, uh, so that was something that I had to get used to. And there was things that, uh, um, and obviously the, the, the size of the staff was a, a lot smaller. And so there was things that, you know, looking around where I was used to having somebody else maybe take care of, it's like, hmm, okay, I guess I can t go ahead and take care of that now. So you're wearing many hats. Exactly. So, but it, it's fun. It keeps, uh, it, it, it's, I, I've, I've done it before, but it's, it's fun to go into and get back into a lot of the, the weeds of running a department. How many parks do we have right here in Rancho Palos Verdes? We've got approximately 17 parks and uh, over, uh, and that includes the beaches, our PV beach, um, including about 1,400 acres of uh, open space preserve. Mm -hmm. And uh, those range from an uh, interpretive center to, uh, you know, day parks, picnic parks, to uh, other community centers, ball fields, and uh, other types of amenities. What's your overall vision right now as, as you lead this department? And what are your priorities specifically? Well, it's really a, a balancing it, and it's being consistent with the uh, city council's priorities. And with their priorities, it's looking at trail enhancements. And with the trail enhancements, we're going to be working collaboratively with uh, Conservancy, uh, the PVPLC, and, uh, and not only maintaining, but managing and providing trails for the, for the community and the whole region. Right. Talk about some of the specific projects around, like right here, Abalone Cove. We've heard a lot about the uh, talk about improvements, I believe, coming up at the March 18th City Council meeting. It will be on the agenda um, awarding a contract for that. Talk about what's happening right here at this park. Right here, there's actually two projects that, are, that will be happening. Uh, the first one will be in the area that we're located in, which will create a more formalized trail system along the bluff and uh, with some interpretive uh, uh, elements to it. Uh, it, it will really uh, give it more circulation, give it more formality, uh, some landscaping to brighten it up a little bit, as well as, you know, really telling people where to go and where they can go to experience things. Uh, beyond that, uh, the second uh, project is uh, the parking lot project, and it's really going to be balancing and mixing in the, this project with that project, and uh, that will be improving uh, the perimeter, uh, kind of rehabbing the, uh, the staff office there now. Um, Something where we're looking at is more of an automated gate as well. Okay. So that will allow staff to get out into the park and talk to the community mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and address things that need to be addressed right away. Um, so it'll be a good mix and match of just aesthetics 
as well as functional for operations. And did you get a grant for that part of that project? Do I remember a grant coming into I that? I believe there was a grant that was received from the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Fabulous. I mean, like you say, we have so, so many parks for everybody to enjoy, but this is really special. I mean, you hike down the, that trail, um, it's just fabulous to go down onto that beach. I mean, the best tide pools are right down there. Absolutely. And I, and I think that was the, the thing when I first got here is that every park that I've been to and visited the first time, it was there's a million dollar view at each one. And uh, it's a lot <laughs> different from where uh, down in San Diego, but um, it, it really is unbelievable. Each park has its own little uh, element of just wow. Yeah. This is a priority. What other some park projects and programs that you might be working on right now you want to share with the community? I think some of the other priorities as well um, are working in collaboratively with the, the school district. Um, we were able to get into agreement with them to uh, use some of their facilities uh, when, those, when they aren't using them, such as a, a pool and as well as a gym. So we're going to be working with them and uh, providing some more programs for the community in those areas. And part of that came to this, our, our city did um, Grant, give some money to the district right when they were building that pool so absolutely through the quimby sort of act they're out, able to uh grant them a, i think it was approximately eighty thousand dollars all right and with that uh, we would like to open it up more to the public right using public funds for them so it's kind of a win-win for everybody and will that be once it's set up um residents from rpv will be able to use both pools at peninsula and is it also pv or is it just the peninsula high pool or all their pools uh, right now it'll be just a peninsula okay and uh the gym at mirror left so um, but again, we're looking to show them that what we provide is good quality programming and uh, hopefully they'll give us some more time beyond that. So do you have any timeline for that, like when we might get our RPD residents swimming over there? Did you we're looking at uh, really pushing out our programs uh, the, either the end of this month or the beginning of next. And uh, that way we can get everything in lined up, whether it's independent contractors, instructors, our staff and uh, making sure everything's ready to roll. And again, communicating with the school district, making sure they're comfortable with how we're gonna operate. And that way, it gives us a little bit of time to make sure we pump out a quality program. Absolutely. Just right down the street from here, right down PV Drive South, is one of, I think, the crown jewels um, of the city with the Palos Verdes Interpretive Center. And I definitely want to remind our viewers that the 30th annual Whale of a Day will be held April 5th. 10 to 4, it was, um, for the first time, it had to be postponed Correct. in the city's history. But the good news is it's happening better than ever, and this will be your first one that you'll get to attend. That's right. I'm excited. <laughs> you, will, you will have a whale of a time. But that, that, that PVIC, that location, is just tremendous and um, a gift to the community, really, to be able to go in that museum and explore. What did, what did you think about it when you first walked in there? Uh, it was unbelievable. Uh, obviously, going through the interview process and stuff, you try to glean as much information about the facilities of the people. Mm -hmm. And I went down there, and I remembered getting a tour from one of the docents uh, through the museum and gathering information that way. And uh, just walking the site, and again, just trying to keep my jaw up because <laughs> uh, the, the, the sights, the, 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 the sounds, and just the views are just amazing. Uh, the facility is just, it is the flagship, and that's how it was described to me, and that's, uh, that's what you see when you go down there. And the fact that those whales just like to come on by and say hello to all of us here on the peninsula, I mean, what a spot. You can see it with a naked, I mean, have you seen any whales down there? I have, I have, <laughs> and, and that's, that's something new for me, too. I uh, actually saw it from up at the City Hall area, and uh, so it was pretty, pretty amazing. But uh, I think beyond that, they've also had, this has been a record-breaking year in the whole time that they've been doing it, I think it was about 30 years. Yeah, they've, they've had really high counts, yes, really high counts. It's impressive. In fact, I think, uh, unfortunately, last Saturday when Whale of the Day was scheduled, um, maybe the whales like the rain, but I guess there was about 101 counted. Oh no! <laughs> traveling, oh, so yes. well, we're looking for uh, we're we're going to hopefully match that Let's number when can, it comes see to if April 5th. We can 5th. top that. I don't know. I have I I sit there and I watch and I wait and I follow those you know Cetacean Society census takers where their binoculars are turning and they say there you know there she blows and I'm like where you know I missed it. <laughs> I, too, I'm always a day late and a dollar short, but. <laughs> But I know one thing for sure, a whale of a day, I, I, you know, they, that bell's ringing all day long and it's really fun to, to see and it's such a community event. But as far as um, PVIC goes, you know, they sort of, different things have happened in phases in terms of exhibits and whatnot, building on that. Is there any plans in the future to continue to grow at PVIC or what's going on there? Absolutely. Uh, first and foremost, we are looking to replace the uh, facility manager there. And we've gone through the interview process and we're, we'll be looking to make some exciting news as far as an appointment uh, here right. shortly. Um, so with that, uh, I want to bring that person on board and make sure that they're a part of uh, not only the city, um, but also uh, as, a, as a teammate of the, the docents, the Los Serenos docents, and uh, figure out where we need to go. Um, there are things down there and there is funding available for a, a, a refresh of exhibits. Um, there's also going to be some future planning for the 
uh, kind of the, uh, I guess, eastern half of that the triangle behind it mm -hmm. as far as kind of an outdoor classroom or an outdoor ex exhibit area. So uh, those design phases are still in the process right now. Uh, so it's exciting times as far as um, the inside of it, but also the outside of the building. And you mentioned again, the facilities manager in the process of hiring when the one retired um, Holly Star had been hit with the city for quite some time. And so I'm sure all your staff is very busy <laughs> trying mm -hmm. to kind of cover all that because you also along with you have wonderful events. People can rent PVIC for weddings and celebrations and also, I mean, with uh, <laughs> you the staff and I really do have to give uh, some, some accolades to that staff. I mean, it's impressive. Um, yes, the staff went after Holly retired. She had a big load and a lot of people had to take a lot of different things in addition right. to what they were already doing. Um, and but so that gift shop staying well stocked. That's one of my favorite <laughs> this is things true. to do besides, I always have to do a little shopping in the gift shop at PV. I say totally Absolutely. unique treasure. I mean, the community the tourists, has... And uh, we got to meet the needs of everybody that comes through those doors. So yeah. whether they want to rent the place or whether they want to, uh, you know, just buy something to, as, a, as a token of, to remember the site or you know, stroll through the museum. Um, right. We have a little bit for everybody. Of course, one thing special about there is when you go in, Los Serenos to Point Vicente, the nonprofit organization, the docents that really help run for the, with the mm -hmm. city, um, they're volunteers. And I know since you've come on board, you've talked a lot about wanting to really bring in volunteers throughout the city in the Rec and Parks system. Talk about that and your, your goal with that. Absolutely. Um, first of all, thank you to the Los Serenos. They're uh, unbelievable. We couldn't do it without them. Uh, their dedication uh, and their, their knowledge of the site and the area is, is, is fantastic. So um, they're great partners and I hope we to strengthen that partnership. Um, in addition, like you said, uh, as far as a youth or a uh, volunteer program uh, overall or citywide, we're looking at, um, my goal is to not step on the toes of uh, Los Serenos or even the, any of the, the volunteer program uh, through the uh, Land Conservancy. Uh, what I'd really like to see is a volunteer base group of people that will assist in our parks citywide. And that could be everything from an Eagle Scout project to a, uh, a large planting area or fence rebuilding or repainting or a park beautification project. Uh, anything like that, that, that we may have uh, some resources to handle, but maybe not all of it, mm -hmm. where if we can get that volunteer assistance, um, all it's gonna do is give, it's, it's a win-win situation. And uh, I have a lot of experience with that down in San Diego. Uh, to the to the tune uh, of being able to report back to the Board of Supervisors that we saved the county over two million dollars in wow. volunteer assistance. So I think we can do that uh, here as well. Um, there's a lot of, it instills a lot of community pride and uh, ownership. Mm -hmm. And once you get community pride and ownership, that's when you see the, the, the vandalism and everybody starts caring more, more and more about the Parks and Rec. And we're gonna, we're gonna have a uh, live here behind us. We've got the LA uh, Sheriff's Department out there I think they're trying to check us out and making sure you're doing a good job taking <laughs> yeah. care of the bar. I think we passed the test. We'll have to check them I think out. that's Dave Roses, Sergeant Dave Roses. <laughs> but seeing the sheriffs go by, talk a little about enforcement out on the trails. This is perfect timing because that's one of your big things is, you know, you have to oversee the beautiful trail Absolutely. system we have and it's all about keep, keeping them safe and, and uh, a place for everybody to enjoy. Right. We do have a contract with the uh, MCRA as far as ranger services. And again, we really looking uh, to have those rangers out there and enforcement is one of their tools, but we really want them to be out there and be a reflection of the city and be a positive uh, environmental education piece to people. Uh, outreach, let them know where they're at, where would they like to go if they need any assistance. Uh, but if we do see people that are, are, are violating uh, the rules and regulations of the preserve or the trails, um, they will receive a citation. Um, as well, we, we do work with the uh, uh, County uh, of LA Sheriff's Department, and they've been a fabulous resource and uh, a quick response, and they understand some of the needs that we have, and uh, they know that we're limited in some of our resources when it comes to enforcement, so they've been very responsive, and we've had some great, great partners in them. We know we're glad they're here making sure we're safe. Yeah. Let me go today. <laughs> Making sure we don't get a sunburn out That's here because right. it's so gorgeous out. Um, you know, what kind of feedback do you get from the community um, and people about terms of what they see the needs are for the parks to enhance or programs they want to see that you run? I mean, you run all kinds of programs at Hess Park and there's all kinds of things that you We get doing. a lot of it is word of mouth. I mean, they tell our staff and, uh, you know, we, we kind of we take that all in. Um, this community is, is, is not shy. And if they like something or don't like something, they let us know. Um, but what I've seen is mostly all positive. And uh, in fact, we'd like to provide more. And, uh, and, and, and in every time we want to make it quality. And uh, so 
in the future, in this in this year, as a part of a, 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 one of the goals of the city council, is to really kind of get an inventory and figure out um, if our methodology of providing programs, whether it's through independent contractors or rentals, or should the city be providing more? So we're really going to take a look at that and see how we can do it. And if it, you know, if it does fall on the side of, well, maybe the city can handle this with uh, existing resources. How can we can do it in a cost recovery type of way? Mm -hmm. So uh, we're really going to kind of do a, a, a grassroots analysis of how we provide programs here. Again, all the while making sure that the programs that we have now are are the best quality we can provide. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you for you, what do you see as some of your challenges right now in 2014 in terms of, again, as directing the Rack and Parks Department for the City of RPV? Um, it's it's again, it's it's balance. It's uh, wanting to make sure that uh, we provide what the city council would like us to provide. Um, it's knowing and understanding and, and, and feeling what the community wants us to provide and providing it uh, when and where they'd like it. Um, but on top of that, it's also making sure that we have the resources to, uh, to, to provide those services and, 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 and above all, making sure that they're safe and clean and uh, facilities and programs that people want to come back to. And so the, my job is really to just keep this ship <laughs> <laughs> sailing straight. Right. And uh, using the resources we have um, and being creative, looking outside the box as far as uh, providing those services. So in the last six months, you've had a chance, I'm sure, to visit every park and walk the trails. And I'm just, have you had any favorite spots you've found in the city of RPV? There's I, I can't, so many. Yeah. But like it's difficult i mean from <laughs> they're from, all good from being down here and even down at the beach and the tide pools here to standing up atop of del cerro and looking down on the goodyear blimp as it flies by right. um each beach park has a different uh, uh feel to it and a different aspect but all the while the consistent part is is the uh pacific ocean and then just the incredible views um but uh i can't say i have a favorite park and, or trail uh, or trail? I can't. I can't say. Yeah. I like all the trails, and depending on the mode and the mood I'm I in, I uh, might want it real strenuous, or I might just want to just relax and slide through one. I was just with my husband taking a hike down the Burma Trail a couple of days ago, and that that land conserve is in there doing incredible work mm -hmm. um, in terms of just habitat restoration right. for the gnat catcher, and they're just busy down there. And exactly. That's all interesting how you manage that relationship with the land conservancy and the city. Exactly, and, and the NCCP helps us you know manage what they need to do and what we need to do um, so it's it's a it's a good relationship and uh, but again one that can always be it, it, every relationship needs to be fed and needs to be fostered and needs to continue to grow mm -hmm. and, and adapt to what's needed out there we are getting a lot of people to come out here um, word is spreading fast that people love these trails so we need to look at it from a, a, a management standpoint an operation standpoint uh, an enforcement standpoint, but also, you know, how we're going to protect and preserve this habitat, you know, in perpetuity. All right. I don't know if you have any idea the kind of numbers of people, um, whether just from our own community or come from all over the world, to enjoy our parks. Do you have any guesstimate? I, I, I mean, it's obviously thousands of people, but I just... Yeah, I, I don't know what the count was. I know the, uh, the Land Conservancy has done some attendance. Uh, in, in the area, but I haven't seen the latest right, report on those. Right, I'm just sure. We know thousands of people, just Whale of Day alone. Absolutely. You'll get counts like that, but it is a great resource to, that we like to share. Um, for you, what's been some of the greatest parts of your job? You came from San Diego, big city, to RPV. <laughs> uh, it's been Which fun. Which we call paradise. Absolutely. Um, it, again, it's, it's, it's fun because uh, in the, the position I was in before down in San Diego, I was in charge of a lot of different things in a lot of different areas. Um, here I deal with one community. Down there, I dealt with one county and 26 communities. So I'm able to focus a lot more mm -hmm. directly, not only just today, but tomorrow, <laughs> the next day, yes. and next week, and so forth. So that's the exciting part about it. I, liked, uh, I like consistency, and I like being able to give things the attention they deserve. Um, but it's also the people, um, meeting out the people up here, and again, the staff that, uh, um, that came with this position have just, just been fantastic. I can't say enough about them. There, there's things that I, I'll come into with a question, and you know they'll say, uh, we already answered that, <laughs> or, or it's already in, on your desk. You have a great team. So they've been fantastic. And so uh, any way that I can get the tools and the support for them as well uh, to right. continue to grow, keep them happy. And because uh, Parks and Rec folks, they're the most resourceful uh, people in the world. And uh, again, you got to, you can put some reins on them, but they, they have to be some long reins. And uh, but it, you just give them some creativity and things will happen. 
for the uh, younger generation that might be watching our show, you know, we have that program at what, uh, Park and Rex on television, That's which right. is a hoot. <laughs> I always get a good chuckle out of that one. Um, and, uh, but, you know, you obviously went to college, you knew you focused on this. Like, what would you say for someone that would be considering getting into this part, this line of work? What the opportunities? And I think our field with Parks and Recreation is, is so diverse and so flexible, is that uh, I just look at my, uh, my experience and, I mean, I was, I've done things that I never ever thought I would do. Um, I've had the opportunity from law enforcement to firefighting, to acquiring land, to managing land, to uh, designing and building parks, maintaining them, scrubbing a restroom, uh, <laughs> and everything in between. But uh, it's, I think that's the fantastic part about this field is that there's so many different aspects of it, mm -hmm. depending on the facility, depending on the jurisdiction, that uh, it's endless. And you've been at it for, you know, over two decades. Have you seen a shift or, you know, in terms of people, you know, accessibility, all kinds of things? I mean, things, things must be changing to make everything, again, more accessible, really. I, I, one of the other great things about our field is that uh, it's very adaptable. And a lot of times things just come back around in a cycle. Uh, the big trends right now have to do with health and that, oh wow, the health uh, community has now decided that parks are kind of a good place to go. It's like, we knew that. <laughs> Come on back. Uh, it's not only a good place for, uh, to become physical uh, as far as exercise and, uh, you know, it, it attend to your health that way. Um, but it's also good. Even if we just want to come out here and bring these beach chairs and sit out and look at the view for right. a while, it's great for mental Are we going to have any outdoor workout gyms at any of our parks in the future? I know when I'm Absolutely. in Europe, you see them. You just, things like that. I think that they're just tremendous. We're looking at exercise courses. And, uh, and again, from my experience, we put a few in down in San Diego, even to the point of being pilot projects going, well, this is going to be an interesting area to see if it works. And they've, uh, they've never failed us. Right. And I think this, uh, it'll be very similar up here. The nice thing I do love about the parks, I was just, again, walking, because um, I live by Trump, and at the top I noticed new picnic tables up there at Maryland Ryan Park. I don't even know when they went in. They, I'm, I'm not quite sure. But the nice thing is, is you just, it's so encouraging to get whole families to come out and, right. you know, a free opportunity to be out here. You know, this Exactly. Is the more we can get people out here to just, just come out here and enjoy these. Yeah. I mean, it's right in your backyard. And, they, you know, the, 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 the local statewide saying right now is that parks make life better. And I think if you ask any individual, they can give you a different answer, but it's, it, it really is, rings true. Parks do make your life better in some way, shape, or form, and that's and, all individual. And we hope that now that you're with us, that you feel like your life is better since you're with RPV, and Absolutely. we're glad that we have you here, and we'll stay tuned. And of course, um, the uh, residents, great, always go on the city website, go on the Rec and Parks Department. You have all the things going on, you exactly. know, programs listed. We've got programs going on at just about every site. And uh, just about every day of every week. And so classes, whether it has Ladera Linda, sleepovers over it has. Uh, junior Ranger PBIC. programs. Yeah. Uh, you name it. How's uh, that Junior provide. Ranger program growing? The, it's growing fantastically. And uh, to the point where we're thinking, okay, how, how do we expand this and how do we get them into the mm -hmm. other parks? Uh, not only do we want to expand uh, the actual program, but we'd also like to expand it across the city and give the, the, uh, the kids uh, different places and different experiences at different places and show them what uh, if there are any environmental differences, biological differences, or what have you in each park, but uh, teach them how to be good stewards of the land. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up. Anything you want to add and bring up that you just want to share with the public? You just... uh, no, I, I appreciate, appreciate this <laughs> opportunity, and uh, it, it's been a fantastic six months, and uh, I look forward to bigger and better things. Spring and summertime's on its way. Absolutely. That's and, our time. That's where we shine. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. That's going to do it for this edition of RPV City Talk. I'm here with Corey Linder. Thanks for watching and have a great day and come out and get to the park.